Good evening and welcome to the Hunter and Central Fieldhouse where we have the sectional semifinals. Hunter and Central against Monroe. I'm sitting here right now with Ryan Donovan. Ryan, this has been a huge season for Hunter and Central. How are they shaping up to come against Monroe tonight? Well, John, first off, I want to start by uh, saying it's awesome to be here. I'm very happy to be a part of this broadcasting crew tonight. This is going to be a great match tonight. This is going to be the match. Monroe's picked the upset Hunter and Central in this sectional semifinal round. And obviously, Hunter and Central's not going to let them come to their gym and do that. It's going to be a great match tonight. Two teams that have abs had absolutely great years. Hunter and Central making one of the best performances they've had in a while against Phillipsburg, one of their highlights of this year. Um, it, stunning defeat in this gym when they were picked to lose. So I think it's going to be a great match tonight. Uh, you referenced the Phillipsburg, game, or the Phillipsburg match. That was a huge match for Hunter and Central. Really shoved the momentum straight down everybody else's throats. Really silenced everybody else who didn't think they would win. And they really they really showed them there because it was it was a devastating loss for Phillipsburg. And it like showed the rest of the, the state like, hey, we're coming. And this, Monroe, I think they're going to be shaking in their boots tonight. Yeah, I and mean, in the Phillipsburg match too, they, they literally physically silenced everyone, the Phillipsburg fans that were in the bleachers, and this was a packed house that, that night, the packed, the most packed I've ever seen it. And we're about to get started with uh, Brett Unger wrestling at 106 for the Red Devils. Brett Unger is having a heck of a year here for Hunter and Central. I believe he's a freshman and he's doing enormous things here for this team. Yeah, he won his first match in the sectional tournament by a technical fall on Monday night, a 15 nothing victory. That's very hard to do in a sense of wrestling, and no matter what weight class you're at, Sunger shoots in on the leg now, single. Climbing up, we're neutral still. Two for Unger, a takedown. One thing about Unger is that he's just so quick and so agile that he can really manipulate his opponent no matter where he, no matter where he is on the mat, whether it be in the side or in the center. But really, you already saw him put him on his back and get the two right off the bat. And I know the quickness is key. It's very important to get right off the bat going quick. I know when I'm on the mat wrestling and someone goes off quick right away, it's it's hard to get adjusted to it because you know you have you a little bit of time to set up and see what the person you're wrestling is going to be like. It's really hard and really good for Unger to be as quick as he is. Especially when you're down at the lower weight classes. Speed is almost everything, I'd say. Yeah, and, yeah. And you, you'd probably know that better than I, uh, being a wrestler. But, like, speed is going to be the killer in the lower weight classes. Indeed it is, indeed it is. And as Unger works on top with a m minute six to go in the first period of this tonight's 106 match. Unger working on top to a very... Resistant Monroe wrestler. Almost nothing to do here. Working flat, trying to get that tight waist. So he runs a hazard tilt attempts. Starting to get back points. Ref two count. We have two holding for back points. Two near fall points for Brett Unger. Brings us to a 4 nothing score in the 106 match with 33 seconds to go in the first period. One thing that you look at Unger, he doesn't look like a very, very strong guy. He looks like a... like. He'd be fast, but like you're seeing a lot of raw strength here from him right now, throwing his opponent on his back, getting those back points, really racking up the points here in the first period. Yes, and we have three more near fall points for Brett Unger here with 19 seconds to go in the first period. We actually have a stall warning on Monroe. You know, our Monroe rests are not doing too much in this first period of action tonight, and that's a, if it keeps going with the warnings, it could be a one point deficit for him, give Unger another point to be eight nothing. In a short time, with just about 10 seconds to go in this first period, Unger has arm in. And he attempts to run another tilt. Short time, that's the end of the first period. 7 to nothing lead for Brett Unger. And you know, John, this is a good good way to start your match. You'd be up 7 nothing because another point, it's 8 nothing. That, that could lead to a major decision, which is good. Because any type of bonus points are good for wrestling matches. You want to get as many bonus points you can. You know, your major decisions, your technical falls, and your pins. Very good to help out in the long run in a match like this. It's going to be tight and locked in. Of course. Now, we saw Brett start on the bottom there um, at the start of the second period. Now, could that be a coaching decision to put, get the eighth point, to get the escape point? Usually that is a coaching decision. You know, it depends on how your match goes. If you show that you've been able to dominate in the match, thus far, you know, the coaches might send you down in the second period because they know you can do it, and then you can get up, and they know you can get that extra point, which is usually thought to be an easier point, escaping from bottom, get that one, get out quick, and then you're on your feet. Bring some momentum back to you, and bring some momentum to the gym when you get a quick escape like that, and you can get out and 
as we see Unger out right away there. Working for a reversal, and he gets his reversal. That's two points for Unger. We're up to nine nothing. As he attempts to run a tight waist now up to a half and a bar. He's running a half, bar half, it looks as if now. Getting near fall points. Our Monroe wrestler's on his back and collecting near fall points. Unger looks as if he's going to get three near falls here. Unger still running that bar ferociously and has that head under and scooped up. Just 50 seconds to go in this second period of action tonight. The ref is holding three near fall points. Three up there brings us to 12 nothing, and Unger is three points away from another technical fall. This could be his first two matches of the sectional tournament with a technical fall to start off for the Red Devils. Having a tech fall as the first match of this match would be huge. It would set the tone for the rest of rest of the night, I think, because we saw that in the Phillipsburg game, or in the Phillipsburg match, excuse me, where it was two two right off the bat pins, and it just the the crowd was electrified, and it was amazing because it really set the tone for the rest of the team and the rest uh, of the night here for Hunter and Central. Yeah, John, I agree with that. I, I think I'm a big believer that any sport, no matter if it be baseball, hockey, football, soccer, wrestling, whatever it will be. Home field, home court, home mat advantage does so much for a team. And I think with a team like that, and you get two quick, like you said in the Phillipsburg match, you get two quick pins and gets a gym going. And then at the end of the thir second period, moving into the third, Unger holds a 12 nothing lead. You now the tech fall brings, brings Unger up to start the match in really great momentum. You get this gym going and get the people excited and you know, bring a little, put a little seed of doubt in the heads of the Monroe wrestlers. I mean, we've seen so much from Brett Unger already this year. It'd be surprising not to see him to to get another tech fall. It'd be one of the, it'd be a day in the life of uh, Jack, um, Brett Unger. It it'd would. be an amazing to see. And when we see there, uh, just six seconds into the third period, we have a potentially dangerous call as Unger gets out and around, and he has two points for a reversal as he rides on top and tries to work a half Nelson in. We are one point away from a technical fall with just 20 seconds gone in the third period. Unger has two on one. Attempting, looks as if he's going to try to run a tilt here. We have a stall warning on green again. And then, this, like I said before, we can get a stall warning. One point would end the match right here. So any, any way that Unger can collect a point here would surely be welcomed from him and the Hunter and Central coaching staff as Unger works from side to side. Tries oh. to fish in a cradle right here. Just stalling on the bottom. That's really what this is. I, I don't know. Um, I honestly don't think the Monroe wrestler knows what to do at this point because yeah, he, knows, he's he knows he knows he can't win anymore. So I, if he stalls, then it's a, it's a and long. We've got near fall like. points here to the ref holding his Unger, and that's it. That's going to do it. It's going to be a 16 nothing technical fall for Brett Unger at the 106 match. Just 103 into the third period, and like we were saying before, John, that does so much for a team to get this great start gets the gym going and gets everyone excited for a great match coming up five points grace the board of hunter and central versus monroe right off the bat out come the 113 weight class as we see colton washleski coming out again colton washleski uh, another very big name here for the hunter and central he's an up-and-coming wrestler and he'll be here for the next few years doing really good things for the team and this is again this is another freshman wrestler that it's put up a tech fall in his first round of the sectional tournament, just like Brett Unger. And that's this is big if you get two tech falls in a row in this match. If you even get a pan or just a regular decision for Washleski, it's, it's very good because you get two matches off the bat. Like I said before, it plants that seed of doubt in the mind of the Monroe wrestlers. And that's it's often something that once that seed's planted, you can't get out of it. And Washleski gets a dump over. Hard scramble here for two. And we go out. Neutral still at the call of the ref. You're still neutral. Very hard scramble in the near corner. It was extremely hard fought by Wyszleski and his opponent, DePaolo. They really, really tried to work each other, and Wyszleski ended up on top at the end, but they happened to fall out of bounds. At first, this is, is going to be a tight match as DePaolo takes a hard um, cup at Wyszleski's head. Get collar tie on. I can tell from now that it's the minute in the match, it's going to be a tight match. Looking very good. A lot of snap downs from DePaula trying to get his two on Washleski. Washleski eventually goes out of bounds and can't get the points there for either wrestler. And Coach Canigallo on the side pointing out the flaws of the Monroe wrestler, DePaulo. 
to Wasilewski to see if he can capitalize on any of those ideas. Wasilewski tries to shoot in for a single. And DePaulo tries to shoot in for a single. Neutral still, discretion of the referee. And Colton's in again, near the edge of the mat, as he's attempting for a double. And we're out of bounds again. 34 seconds to go in this first period of our 113 match here tonight. Very hard fought first period so far. Colton's taking the offensive so far, but I, honestly the Monroe's defense has been stellar as well. They, he's been countering almost everything that Colton's been throwing at him. And Colton's gone for the singles, doubles, but it just hasn't been working, and Monroe seemed to escape each yeah, time. You know, this, this might be one of the matches that you see that. You don't see a score in the first period, and that gets even more tense and more exciting to watch because you have to see that's when every point matters. That's when if you start on bottom in the second period, or that, that might even be a, a choice that you defer. And you know, defer is when you give the choice to the opposing team. If you, you won the toss in the end of the first period and you defer, you know, you get that choice in the third period, which is most times better if it's a tight match like mm -hmm. this. And mm -hmm. Tapal attempts a hard single, and we are ending the stalemate. 0-0 zero, zero at the end of the first. Watch Lesky's choice, and he's going to defer to start this. He was going to defer, but Coach Canigala's discretion, we're going to go down. I was thinking, he's thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Give him the... Second period choice, so he gets third, but Coach Kanagawa thought otherwise on the Red Devils bench. And Wachleski's out quick. And we have one escape point. Like I said before, John, this escape point could be very crucial in the fate of this match. Of course. Oh, and like I said, I literally saw Coach Kanagawa say, like, I, I want you down. I want you to get that point. He, wa he wanted that one point to give him just a slight edge over it. And one point, it might not seem like a lot, but it also deals with a mental game against Monroe because then, now Monroe has to fight back because he was playing the defensive game, but now um, Wachowski can play the offensive game and has a little bit of wiggle room. It may, may not be much, but Wachowski can easily play offense while Monroe has to keep playing defense now. That's correct, John. And then... We see there DePaulo almost gets a takedown and Wachleski just out of bounds. Very fortunate for the Red Devils as they could have been down 2-1 there in that little sequence. But Wachleski attempting for a throw in on a single. DePaulo has a hard whizzer in. Going to be a scrap here for two points for each wrestler. Wachleski for the step over and DePaulo has a hard collar tie on now and they're back up to neutral on their feet. No points yet. Wachowski attempts an ankle pick, and DePaula almost has a throw. They go out of bounds towards the uh, near side of the mat. This has been a very evenly matched 113 uh, matchup here. It's still only 1-0, and Colin Wachowski is throwing everything he has at DePaulo, but nothing seems to be working so far. And you know, there's points that either wrestler could have it, and DePaulo, they're in a key scramble situation right now that either wrestler can come out on top, and Wachowski's gonna come is. out with two. Two takedown for Colton Wachleski. We move up to a three nothing lead with 40 seconds to go in the second period. DePaulo almost to his feet, but Wachleski keeps him right back down. The entire central bench screaming. We're seeing two near fall points here for Colton Wachleski. We're gonna move to a five nothing lead and this very big. Colton has just broke the match open to an opponent in DePaulo that he could not do anything against before. DePaula gets to his feet, but Colton rides him out of bounds. Colton Wachleski will be riding top with 17 seconds to go in the second period. All it seemed Wachleski had to do was get him down onto the ground and keep him there. And it, like you said, it broke the match wide open. It's now 5-0 against DePaula, and he still got him down on the ground. Uh, I don't think DePaula knows how to get back up after this. Wachleski is known for keeping kids on the ground and getting those near fall points. And then he works in a potential tilt and that's going to bring us to the end of the second period five to nothing the lead in the second period in starting with the third for Colton Wachleski and DePaula from Monroe chooses to go down having faith that he can get up from Colton Wachleski we have seen him work up numerous times but Wachleski has been a, the smarter wrestler here riding him out of bounds or working a good mat return to keep him on the ground Wachleski with a tight waist tilt, gonna collect two near fall points to an applause of the 100 Central Gym. Gonna move up to a seven nothing lead, and again, we're, we're pretty close to eight nothing. Or we have a full Nelson call on Wachleski here. That's one green, so they're gonna have seven one. It's still a very high lead for Colton Wachleski as the referee explains what he did wrong. I'd love to see Wachleski get the major here. He has plenty of time to do so. And honestly, it could, it, 
I don't think he can go Monroe's way at this point. He's keeping him on the ground. And he's got oh, him down. Oh, and he's down. Yeah, he's down. He's got him down. A nice dump over. The ref calling the near fall points. It's the Paul's on back there. That's there's a there's pin. the pin. Colin Wasleski. The Hunter Central Gym. Ecstatic right now. After a Colin Wasleski pin at 113 pounds. The Red Devils are up to an 11-0 lead on the match after two so far tonight. What an amazing first two matches we saw here in the field house. Colton Wachowski with a very, very slow and uh, non-scoring first period comes around, breaks out into a pin here for Hunter and Central, 11-0. Now, John, this is the type of night that you need that match. You need the stalemate going out, and you need to do everything you can. In the wise words of Alex Schaefer, who wrestled here a while ago, you need to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes to get that win, to get those extra points, and six points is better than anything else. Again, it's all about the mental game at that point. You literally just put two losses on Monroe's roster. That's not good for morale or anything. And it was a tech fall, and it a was pin. a pin. It, it, those Very are two big, things two you don't matches. want to see on a wrestling, uh, a wrestling score sheet. And we see coming sheet. up next at 120 pounds, we have Justin Miller from 100 Central. This might be seen as part of a surprise as Jack Bauer, the normal 120 pounder. He has been battling the flu for the past couple of days, which could be why he's out tonight. And I do not see him warming up behind the Red Devils bench any longer. So that might be the only chance we would have to see Jack Bauer. Sometimes Coach Canigallo does shift the weights around for more strategic opportunities mm -hmm. to score some points. But it seems that that's going to be the case tonight. It could be a smart decision sending out a healthy Miller to combat another hopeful win against Monroe. Jack Bauer, another huge name that we've heard. So uh, talking about it here on 100 Central Wrestling. Um, he's racked up so many wins this season. It's kind of hard to see him not be here for the uh, sectional semifinals. You know, Jack, this is a this is a kid. He's a junior in high school. He's in his third year of being a varsity starter here. That's very it's a very hard task to do, and just, just phenomenal wrestling from when I joined him in the room freshman year to now. I've seen him grow so much, and it's exciting to see the potential that he has. So, and hopefully, going down to Atlantic City this year to make some noise. Now the topic on hand, Justin Miller, we're in a tight hand fight with 40 seconds to go in the first period. Miller on his knees, rises back to his feet, sheds the collar tie off from Monroe, and we're going to continue here. We're just exchanging blows to the head now. One thing I've seen consistent with Monroe so far is that they aren't really taking the offense. They're kind of like waiting for Hunter Central to make the first back. And really, it hasn't worked so far. Hunter Central's yeah, offenses are relentless. They are like they're explosive and furious. You will not beat a Hunter Central wrestler on defense. And you've got a tight tie in there, and it looked as if the Monroe wrestler was trying to push Miller away from him as he has arms all the way locked out, pushing off of Miller as he tried to reach in for a single or a double or anything he could. And again, we've had our tight match here as the first period comes to a close. It's 0-0. Zero to zero. Miller will be riding on top to start the second period as he attempts to break his wrestler down. And this is kind of in the iron frog there. He's not really doing too much on bottom. He could be seeing another stall warning coming up soon because really Miller's trying to break him down. And he's, he's not doing too much. And now reaching to a quad pod and getting back up. Miller does a ferocious mat return to keep him back down to an applause of the Hunter and Central Fieldhouse. Miller with a hard shoulder into the back of the Monroe wrestler now putting his head into to try to break him down and see what he can do from there. He appears he has a tight waist in, bouncing from side to side, attempting a tight waist tilt. As the tight waist is out, and the Monroe wrestler has just about gotten out. We are still in a scramble, no points yet, and that's one for an escape point for Monroe. The Monroe Falcons take a 1-0 lead in the 120-pound bout of tonight's match. That's tough. I mean, Hunter Central's wrestler had him right down on the ground and had his had his head digging into his shoulder, but couldn't really do anything. He was, I think it could have been an, almost a stalling as he was just kind of wait, waiting for some, like an opportunity to get back up. I guess, yeah, like we said before, he's kind of just sitting in an iron frog down at mm -hmm. the bottom, which, you know, you don't really want to see that as Miller's trying to work side to side and he's, he's bouncing back from side to side, which, you know, the coaches tell you to do in the room. If you want to try to make it look like a stalling call, you have to work from side to side. And the refs in their pregame speech to both teams, they tell you side to side work is important if you want to make it look like someone else is stalling. And so we see that someone's stalling. And Miller tries to shoot in for a single here to a good sprawl 
from our Monroe wrestler, and he is down to the ground, and neither wrestler is doing anything right now. Working in, and we are have a stalemate call with 33 seconds to go in the second period of tonight's 120-pound bout. Both wrestlers quickly back up on the starting lines. And Miller, Miller looks as if he's tired. This is very, very reminiscent of the last match, as we saw. It was a very, very... Um, very slow start. Slow, very slow start, but we could see an explosion here from Miller. Uh, you have to hope you see that. And hopefully, I think an explosion here from Miller. Being down one nothing in a tight match, it's really... It's, it hasn't been totally one person's way. Miller's had some good scrambles. Our Monroe wrestler has also had some good scrambles. But it's, this is all going to be about who wants it more. And as the second period comes to a close... Monroe wrestler is trying to use numerous crackdowns, and Pierce is trying to work in a cement job, but the cement job is unsuccessful as Miller's going to choose down for the start of the third period. Coach Canigala urging Justin Miller that he has to move here to start the third as an escape point here can put the Red Devils in a tie with the Monroe Falcons in the 120-pound bout. As Miller really trying to get out hard, and our Monroe wrestler has cracked him down straight on his stomach. Miller is up to his knees again. Trying to work in, and Miller sat out. He's close. Miller's dumped around. And Miller's got him on Miller his has stomach. Nothing yet. Two should be soon. He's two. Got it. There it is. Two points for Justin Miller. A reversal is better than an escape. And the Red Devils are up 2 1 in the 120 pound bout with one minute and 20 seconds remaining in the match. Like I said, I knew we were going to see an explosion from Miller, and that was it. Now he's got the Monroe wrestler on his stomach, and he's got him a bit in the air. He's just got to learn how to flip him over, and he's kind of got him. He's got him. He's and, working him. And you know, John, top. as we said, that explosion did so much to the 100 and Central Gym. The field house is electric right now. As they call a stall warning on Justin Miller, which is, again, bringing some questions from the field house, and we're going to run blood time for the Monroe Falcons. Each wrestler here in a match gets five minutes of blood time to contain the bleeding from where they f are bleeding from. It appears that our Monroe wrestler is bleeding from his left arm or hand, I'm not quite sure, as trainer Anthony Riccardella tries to clean up the situation out in the mat. And again, John, as I said, you know, you get four minutes for the trainers to get out and clean their, the mat up and wrap up his wrist in this situation to make sure that the blood's not getting anywhere else in the mat. We're in a cup of time with 30 seconds down. As you can see, Coach Colin Hewitt trying to run some techniques through Justin Miller's head. And I think, you know, John, I don't know about you, but I think that that reversal really did just do a lot of damage to the Monroe wrestlers, you know, mentality right now. Again, yeah, it's all about the mental game at this point. I mean, it's, it's speed and mental game when you're in the lower weight classes. You can agree with me with that uh, or not. Because I think from what I've seen so far in these matches, it's a lot of... You need the you need the perseverance, you need the strength, and you need the speed. And that's uh, that's at any match, any level, not just the younger guys or the lighter guys, but as Miller holds on desperately to keep that point, and we have nothing. Miller is still on top, doing a phenomenal job. From an applause from the 100 and Central Fieldhouse to keep our Monroe wrestler on the bottom with just 40 seconds to go. And this is big right here, as we're going to see near fall points. No fall, near fall points, only one count from the ref, but Miller is close and the 100 Central Fieldhouse is glowing, growing with electricity. He gets out and Miller keeps him down. This is huge for the Red Devils. No escape points yet, it's just 20 seconds to go. Miller holding on for dear life and we are out of bounds. Still on the bottom is our Monroe wrestler and Miller is calling for a run in injury time. As we have one minute and 30 seconds here for an injury. An unknown injury right now to Justin Miller, and this could be very hurtful to the Red Devils as Miller has proven through these playoffs so far to be one of the most influential wrestlers. He had a great match in his first round of the sectional tournament tonight, putting up a great fight against a really strong wrestler from Monroe. And, you know, we're up 2-1 now, tremendous effort. As trainer Riccardella cl clears the scene, it appears that Miller will be okay with one minute left. Stepping in for the shoes of Jack Bauer is a huge responsibility, and so far Miller has done exactly that. He's really lived up to the name that Jack Bauer has put out, and he's he's winning, and he only has 17 seconds to keep the Monroe wrestler on the ground, and I think he can do it. He can fight. I think he can power through this injury and uh, keep it keep it still. 
as Miller back up to his feet with 30 seconds of blood time left and 17 seconds left in the match. And John, I'm trying to find a statistic on my phone for the kid who's Miller's wrestling and what his record is this year. And Miller keeps him down on the ground. No escape points with eight seconds to go. Hunter Central is going electric. And a stall warning and a point of warning to Monroe. A horrible call from the officials tonight. The 100 Central bench, Coach Candigallo Rahm and Coach Brian Bistis expressing their dissatisfaction with the ref as Miller keeps our Monroe wrestler down. And we're going to head to overtime, John. Oh, seeing that kind of put a frog in my throat, to be honest with you, because he was trying all in his power to, to take the Monroe wrestler down, but it just couldn't happen. Miller tried his, so hard, and you, he literally just came off an injury. So I, I get that like it might not be the most like eventful minute, but seriously, I don't, I don't think it was the right call. And John, you know, as you said, all that is the dissatisfaction in the entire gym at the ref now for his call. And it calls out that the uh, Monroe wrestler seems to be punching Justin Miller in the head. And it calls from the 100 Central Bleachers that it's not boxing, which is a very uh, intense scene here. As we know, those of you that don't know the rules of overtime in a wrestling match out there is, the first in the first period, the first wrestler to get two, and Justin Miller He's gets done two. It. He's done. And that's it. it. Miller raising his arms in the field as a 4-2 victory. Absolutely huge for the Red Devils. Absolute chaos here in the 100 Central Fieldhouse as Miller takes his opponent down in overtime. An amazing turnaround there after tying it up 2-2 with five seconds left in the third period. And you know, Outcomes. Justin Miller, that's a very, very, very big match to bring the Red Devils lead to 14 nothing tonight. And this is big. This is bad for Monroe, who has picked to upset the number one seed in the sectional tournament of Central Jersey Group 5. Out comes Anthony Romanello, the first of the Romanello brothers at 126 tonight. And for the Red Devils, Anthony Romanello. Romanello and the Monroe wrestlers shake hands. Still at neutral. So neutral. And, you know, Anthony Romanelli, this is one of my favorite kids on this team. You know, his, his attitude in the locker room, he always has a smile on his face, always welcoming to all the wrestlers, no matter if they're JV, varsity, freshman, senior. It does not matter. He's one of my overall favorite kids, and watching him wrestle is always a treat. You know, it's always good to see him wrestle. He always does a good job. He's got his opponent down with a double, but they come back up to neutral. And like you said, like, Attitude is a lot on this team, and it, I, I believe this is more than team. You guys re wrestle with each other almost every day after school. It's more than that. It's a family, and you guys are really with each other on and off the mat, and Coach Canagallo stresses the, the importance of that. And this is the 126 match tonight. And the last match for Monroe, Monroe's 126-pounder, Michael Bellardo lost a 4 nothing decision to Mike Boat of Oldbridge. And check out Michael Bellardo's record for this year for the Monroe Falcons. This year he's 12-4 and four with six pins and two major decisions, no technical falls. So there's going to be a stiff competition for Anthony Romanel tonight, you know. Anyone having a winning record on a varsity lineup is very hard to do, and this guy's a third-year varsity letter winner. Total record is 37 and 27, so he's he's 10 matches above 500. And again, Romanello is almost taken down and bouncing in the scramble position as we barely are able to keep in, and we remain at neutral. Honest, looking at Romanello, I mean, he has a lot of strength in his agility as well. He and his brother definitely know each other's tricks, so. They've, they've learned off of each other, and I think Romanello... And that's a two-point takedown for Anthony Romanello. Like I, like I was going to say, Romanello knows exactly what he's doing, and he's going to win this match. And we can see attempt for a riding with legs in on the left leg of Bellardo. And Romanello is going to ride out the period on top. It's a fantastic way to start. The 126 pound bout for the 100 Central Red Devils as Anthony Romanello sees that he's in control and he's going to defer this match to the third period for his choice. And Michael Bellardo is going to choose to go on the defense in the start of the second period. 
Anthony Romanello is relentless on the ground. He will keep you down and probably get more near fall points as he knocks his opponent down ferociously and keeps him there. And you know, from the standpoint of a wrestler, anyone that's riding you so ferociously on top, it's hard to get up from that. As Anthony Romanello puts his legs in again, and that's one of the hardest things to combat against is when someone's riding with their legs in. And this is a situation that Romanello doesn't want to get caught too high as he slams Bellaro back down to the mat. We're doing very well so far, Romanello, in the second period, and he's collecting near fall points. We're going to... The ref continuing to count. We should collect at least three near fall points here, Romanello. And the three near fall points to make this a 5 nothing match with 120 to go in the second period. Romanello looking to put him on his back and pro hopefully get the pin. Romanello riding with those legs again. This has been a key move for Anthony Romanello this match thus far. Choosing the legs for a very big option and hearing from the stands a cradle and there it is. Anthony Romanello slams Bellotto into a cradle and we're collecting near fall points. Bellotto squirming around trying to get out of this cradle but Romanello has a death grip in. And he's got the pin for Anthony pin. Romanello with 54 seconds to go in the second period. Romanello bumps the Red Devils lead up 20 to nothing. Like I said, Romanello is relentless. And like I said, he was going to win. There was no doubt in my mind. Romanello had complete control of this match from the very, very start. And there we saw it. Another pin there for Hunter and Central. And John, that's an overall huge match for Hunter and Central, setting up perfection for Hunter Graf. Hunter Graf, this is one of the best wrestlers that's ever come through Hunter and Central. You can't even disagree with that. Hunter Graf is amazing to watch and you see him and he really, he literally strikes fear in the opponents uh the opponent's hearts he's no. so fast and so strong that you you can't you can't get around him he's already got two points and we're less than 10 seconds and in. he has a quick two points like you said just now john over Corey fernandez from monroe township in Corey's first round of the sectional match he collected a three to one victory over his opponent from old bridge as hunter's going to collect two back points for near fall for the Red Devils and that's going to bring us to a 4 nothing lead just 30 seconds into the first period of this 132 pound bout and as you said before this is the excitement of Hunter Graf and watching him wrestle and everything he does is just phenomenal. Honestly it's poetry in motion. You, you saw it we're not even a minute into this and he's already up 4-0. And Graf and he's got the pin with a half a minute. Nelson. One minute and 17 to go and the Red Devils are up 26 nothing in the field house. The Hunter and Central bench is electric right now. Like I said, it's poetry in motion. It was 4-0 with less than 30 seconds in, and it was but by, by the end, not even by the end of the minute was it already a pin. Absolutely stunning to watch. And this sets up another great match. Pasquale Between Vizzone. Andrew Lombard and Pasquale Vizzoni, and this is going to be a great match here. Now, Pasquale, he had a tough start to this year. He had issues with his meniscus. He ended up having to get surgery, and it's phenomenal that he's back out on the mat so quick after having a major surgery on your knee, and most people would think that you wouldn't be able to wrestle as we see we have that knee pad on his left knee and wrapped up in his right knee, too. I know Pasquale's had a history of knee problems, so it's very good that he's combating everything that's happened to him, and he's, he's wrestling in a varsity lineup. And he's been doing really well the entire year. Uh, he's been exciting to watch, too. Another another one of these lighter guys that's been ex very exciting to watch. And as you said, a little preview of Andrew, Andrew Lombard from Monroe. In his first round of the sectional tournament, he collected a 15-6 victory over Alec Myers from Oldbridge. So like I said before the start of the bout, this is going to be a very tough match for both wrestlers as they're both very talented and very resourceful on the mat. As you see, we're about to... Countdown to one minute gone in this first period. Pasquale Vizzoni and Andrew Lombard still fighting in with collar ties, sweeps to try to collect the first two points of the night. Pasquale's got the agility, which is something. And Pasquale! Oh, Pasquale's got him on his back. Right on the back. And Pasquale Vizzoni should have had some back points here. <laughs> Angry calls from the crowd here at Hunter and Central. Many calls for two points, even though there are two reps. One of the commentators from the stands is, is calling out. Pasquale is going to ride Andrew Lombard out of bounds. Bizzoni will ride on top with 25 seconds to go in the first period, trying to collect as many more near fall points as he can. As Pasquale actually took down his opponent, it was amazing. 
because, he, like I was about to say, how fast and how agile Vizoni was. For somebody with uh, a history of knee problems, like you said, he seems to be doing quite well for himself. I mean, he's really he really has the willpower to come out here and wrestle for Hunter and Central and overcome the, the adversity that's in his way. And Vizoni's trying to work a hard bar right on here in on Lombard. Wrapping around the front of Lombard's chest as that's going to ride out the end of the first period. Two to nothing, Vizoni, but a very hard fought two points after the first period of wrestling. And Vizoni takes down. We're going to see a quick escape as Colin Hewitt, one of the coaches for his 100 Central Wrestling team, gives some advice to Vizoni from the Red Devils bench at the start of the second period. And Vizoni's quickly out. Trying to reach around his back, and Bazzoni has to be careful here that he doesn't get caught in this rough situation reaching around at Lombard's head like that, but Bazzoni is out, and Lombard's just gonna ride him out of bounds. And this has to bring motivation to Bazzoni to get right back up and get out as Lombard has rode him out of bounds the first time he's tried to get up. 12 seconds gone in the second period. Bazzoni wrapped his hands around the Monroe, but he gets the escape points, but I thought he was gonna try and go for the reversal there. Uh, after we saw the first one where they came back up and went out of bounds. You know, I was really looking that way because he's reaching around at the head of Andrew Lombard, and that's, that's sort of a dangerous situation to get into, and you mm -hmm. don't really want to find yourself in that too much, but Vizzoni does know what he's doing, and he does know his limits to where it would be safe to reach back, so that's obviously why the entire gymnasium has trust in Pascali Vizzoni here that he knows what to do tonight as we are up to a 3 nothing lead for Vizzoni with 1.15 and ticking off the clock in the second period of action in the 138 pound bout. One thing that I'm noticing here is Vizzoni's actually visibly shorter than his opponent, which some might call a disadvantage, but I'm gonna call it a, an advantage against this because he, he's faster and he's more agile than his opponent, and we've seen that so far. So he could easily go for the takedown and keep him down because he's, he's got a little more mass, I'd say, and it, it, more speed. Most Indeed definitely. he does. Pasquale, we did see him trying to work a underhook in as he, he gets a quick single leg in as Lombard works a hard wizard to try to combat Vizzoni's single leg. Vizzoni has him up and he's trying to pull him back in and Lombard's trying to run out of bounds. Vizzoni the trip and two as they go right out of bounds. They go out of a bounds. very good call on the referee that's been a little shaky tonight for Hunter and Central, and Coach Hewitt is mentioning for Vizzoni to get right back in as soon as he can to keep this momentum up with 25 seconds to go in this second period. Monroe starting on the bottom, Vizzoni on top. And Vizzoni's just riding Lombard into the ground here. Vizzoni keeping him down, working on top. Uh, 10 seconds left. It's rare that we're going to see a stall warning here with this time quick left. But Vizzoni is working, so that's not a worry. And calls from bleachers for Vizzoni to be careful as we ride out the second period of wrestling in the 138-pound bout. As Andrew Lombard quickly chooses that he's going to go down, which could be a surprise considering the fact that he's had a lot of trouble against Vizzoni reaching up to his feet back in the second period when he spent almost the entire time on his knees. Yeah, that is very surprising from a coaching perspective because you're trying to get as many points as you can. You have two minutes to do so. Having your uh, having your wrestler start on the ground is nothing to be nothing to be trifled with because then, he, like, he has to get out, um, and it, it's it's nothing it's nothing you want to see done. Exactly, and John, you know, you say from a coaching perspective, I really didn't see too much action from the Monroe bench over there. I haven't seen it from since the. That we've had a couple pins tonight. I really haven't seen too much of anything from the Monroe bench. You know, they're, they're getting excited at the beginning of the match. I mean, they're clapping everyone up to go out, and you really haven't seen that in the last couple of matches. And I, I think what you said about the momentum and the, you know, the drive to keep going at the beginning of tonight's match, I think that might have seeped into the Monroe's head a little bit. I think that seed of doubt is there. That's, that's a very good point. I'm looking at Hunter and Central's bench, Coach Canigallo, Coach, Coach Hewitt, even Mr. Rick are very electric in, in talking to uh, the wrestlers. So it, it's very, very different from what I'm seeing from the Monroe bench, which is utter silence. Yeah, it's they're just... Not even, they're not even helping out their... their like, it, it's it's little it's little comments. It's not even, like, words of advice to, like, see see what you can do. But you see Coach Hewitt literally telling Vizzoni how, how to how to beat his opponent and what to do here. And so that's a nice trip. There's a mat return 
Pervisoni to get Lombard back down onto the mat as he tries to work a bar half pinning combination in. Ferocious bar and Lombard seems to be in some obvious pain here as Vizzoni keeping that tight bar in Lombard's back as we have 40 seconds just about left on the clock in this third period of wrestling. Vizzoni controls a 5-0 lead. I believe the ref is going to call a potentially dangerous call on Andrew Lombard or on Pasquale Vizzoni as Andrew Lombard gets up favoring his left shoulder. Bazzoni's going to be on top again. Now, going back to the coaching thing, it almost looks like <laughs> the Monroe coaches are sitting leisurely and kind of like hunched over, which is not something, it doesn't bring good news. Um, yeah, the way they have that, that hunched over look kind of just, uh, and there's the first coaching that you've seen from Monroe the entire night. As Andrew Lombard collects one point with 20 seconds left, this might be too much as Pasquale Bazzoni has a tight underhook in and control of both of Lombard's arms. 10 seconds to go in this match. Bazzoni in total control as the two wrestlers go out of bounds. We're gonna be neutral still. As Coach Colin Hewitt and Coach John Cantagallo Rom are both very electric on the Red Devils bench. Even with seven seconds to go, you see our coaches going at it and really telling telling Bazzoni how to win. But here you go, another win for Bazzoni. As Pasquale Bazzoni gestures to keep the applause coming from the 100 Central Bleachers. Very, very, very electric match so far. Out comes the second Romanello brother, that's Vincent Romanello. As Vinny Romanello awaits his opponent coming out, and as I said before, Kind of a depressing <laughs> applause coming from the Monroe bench, you know. You know, John, you get a little uh, giggle out of that, but it's it's kind of the truth, you know. You're not seeing too much action from over there, and that's, and I said, in a sport like this that you have so much momentum, and in any sport, having belief in yourself is good. I, I'm looking at it from an a, my own athlete's perspective, and I'm sure you are too. Seeing that happen is nothing you want, like, that's not a team. That's no, like, that's... That's a team that, you know, that's why I think this 100 Central team is so good and they've had so much success because they, they've, they banded together. As you see Romanello bring Vanelli down onto the mat pretty hard and he's got to let him back up. 2-1 with 20 seconds gone. No points yet. As Vanelli sprawls hard and Romanello has that single leg in pretty tight. Romanello again, two points for a takedown. And like I said earlier, looking at Hunter and Central, they're more like, a, like you guys are more like a family. You guys are all together. You guys support each other on and off the match. But over on Monroe, I think this is this could even just be a match type thing because Mon Mon Hunter and Central is winning 29 -0. And Vinny, Vinny throws a tilt in and he's collecting near fall points. He's going to collect three near fall points from that tilt. He ran on Vanelli to a nice applause from the Hunter and Central bleachers. And John, talking about the team aspect, last year, Around this time, the 100 Central team was getting very caught up in whose name was on the board across the way, whose name was up there under the 132, 138, who was up there. So Coach Canigal had a very easy solution to that. Took all the names down and slowly put up the word team. And that focused them right back. And I think that, that that's why Coach Canigal is so successful. That's why this team is so successful, because of that team mentality. That it really shouldn't matter and Romanello Settles down, looking like we might have another pin, and we do! Vinny Romanello with 30 seconds to go in the first period. 35 nothing tonight. That is the third pin tonight. Amazing, amazing there from Vinny Romanello. Again, like you said, it's all about the team aspect. You, you're out there on the mat alone, but you still have the team behind you. You're, you're not truly alone. You have the entire team back. That's true, you. that's true. And, and folks, we're going to switch it off tonight. Another 100 Central wrestler, Jack Ritchie, is going to take over for me for the time being. And we're excited to have Jack out here to call the rest of the match. It's been a, very, it's been a pleasure being on here, and I hope to be back tomorrow night as we take on Howell. Ryan, thank you so much for being here. Well, great job by Ryan Donovan out there. Really great excitement out here tonight. Today we have uh, Norman Cello, one of our freshmen, uh, 152. 
So High Central has a great lead right now, 35 and 0. Still just the first period, receiving great movement by both wrestlers. Still neutral, hand fighting, back and forth right now. Good movement between the both of them. Now, another huge freshman name we see here from the Hunter and Central uh, roster. How have you seen Norman develop over the, over the season so far? Fresh, uh, when you're wrestling in high school, it just seems like there's so much more of a jump. And Norman, he, he, got, he got right with it right away. It's not easy. You really see freshmen of varsity and JV, no matter who you are, it, it always takes a little bit. But Norman, he seems right away to get right into it. And uh, he's, I just don't seem like he's got any time to slow down. Now, Norman, I can already tell that he's fast, he's strong. Mm -hmm. What are some things that he, he really looks for in matches against his opponents? Well, he's got some really, really long arms. And you might see in here, he has some great ankle picks, single legs. He likes to work that right now. You can see this guy has a real deep shot on him, but Norman doesn't even see him worried. His arms are already right back there, and he's defending the shot greatly. Now, when you have uh, long arms like that, now, like you said, the Monroe wrestler already has a, a very deep shot on the, the back of the thigh against Norman, but literally Norman reached back and grabbed both of yep. Monroe's wrestler's ankles. Yeah, I mean, that's just a real hard thing to defend against. It's not all the time. And even still, the ref has to call a stalemate because even that Monroe wrestler is so deep into that shot, Norman is holding on. Ref had to call a stalemate just to break it up and right back into neutral. Norman seems to be a bit more on the defensive side, but I won't, I'll expect us to see some more action against him again. Again, defending another shot with those arms. They're real close to the outside of the circle now. So we could see this work back in. We could see a work out. Uh, give Norman back right back out there. <clears throat> oh, and Norman's already... Uh, we uh, got grounded out for time there, but Norman uh, looks like he's going down. First, he uh, deferred. Coach Tom to go down. Norman's very explosive again with that length. Him standing is hard to keep guys to get him down. He's uh, potting up already and he's standing. Let's just see if he can get an escape from here. <clears throat> Norman already back on his feet, looking to get back up. Norman's a very, very calm wrestler. He, it, it doesn't seem like he's worried at all right now. He's in pretty good position considering that he started from bottom, now he's a standing and uh, Pushed out, stall warning on green. <clears throat> Norman down on the ground again. Now, Norman, he's gotten to his feet really quickly before. Yes. So he just couldn't get the escape before mm -hmm. uh, Monroe got called before the escape. Now, Monroe's actually trying a different tactic here. I see that his leg is caught up, and Norman, can't, he's, be, he's still on his feet, but oh, here we go. Norman trying to stay down. Just like I said with that long legs, he tried lifting him, but Norman was able to stay down there. We still have a whole nother minute. I believe that Norman is a smart wrestler. I believe we'll see some more movement from him. <clears throat> Norman's working back up to his base now as uh, Monroe tries to get a half in there. Norm's not letting any of that happen. He's already basing up. He's up, standing. Now he just has to defend this single leg. Break neutral, we have 44 seconds left. and almost seems like the Moreau wrestler's just holding him, hit stalling one more time. <clears throat> A point of reward to Norman. Um, the Monroe wrestler was holding that single leg, just holding on so he wasn't trying to advance anywhere. And even seems he was trying to push him out of that circle. It's clear that he's scared of having Norman in this position. I think he knows exactly what Norman can do, and he's really trying to stop him because that's the second time he's gotten called for holding that leg up in the air because he, he, he's clueless on how to, how to stop Norman. Oh, that's too bad. Norman was standing and had him. Uh, they, had, they were out of the circle, though, and had to restart. Norman, if he was just to back up some, look, he would have had it. <laughs> Right back, we have 10 more seconds. Norman's breaking away, and it looks like he got the one there. <clears throat> six seconds left, Norman. Six seconds left with the second period. Norman leads 2-0. Movement from both wrestlers. I don't believe we'll see too much. Um, well, now we're heading in. And now we head into the third period. It's been a tough match for Norman so far. I mean, 
Um, the Monroe wrestler is really trying to stop Norman, but it hasn't been working as Norman has one stall point and uh, one escape. There's really nothing that Norman can like. He can't mess up at this point because he's got two minutes to keep this two, mm. and Monroe started down. Another thing with Norman is I, I have noticed he does like to throw legs in there, and already right away he had both legs in. Norman's broken his man down. He's posting pretty hard. You can tell it takes a lot of muscular endurance to uh, withstand something like that, but nothing for Norman. Broken down again. We're, uh, I expect Norman's trying to work something. It looks like he has a, both arms under a corkscrew right now. If he keeps walking that, he might get something. And it looks like he's going to keep on trying to work around there. <clears throat> Monroe is really struggling to fight out of here. Yeah. There we go. He wanted to bump him there, get some space between them. Now that uh, Monroe's broken out and has no base whatsoever. He's not posted on his legs, has not posted on his arms. Uh, I believe because that's part of the reason why Rev was calling a stalemate there. It looks like there's a little bit of movement between the two of them. Norman starting on top again with uh, one more minute. Norman still very dominant here uh, with half, half or a minute left in this third period. But he's really got to figure out how to keep his opponent on, on, on the mat here as it's winding down past a minute. Norman's still up by two, but he cannot let anything go awry here. Norman still seems incredibly calm. It doesn't seem like the crowd, the refs, or anything is in his head right now. He's only focused on one thing, and that's keeping this man down. And even still, I believe, no matter what, Norman's going to have a, a positive mindset about everything going on. He's a good wrestler, and I, I expect we'll see good things from him in the future. <clears throat> Right back down, he brings Monroe. Looks like he has a half in going for that other arm now. If he was to drive forward a little bit, he could be at the start to some uh, fall points. Only eight seconds left. Wow, another one for Hunter and Central. Very good decision here for Hunter and Central. Hunter and Central so far undefeated. So in this as Norman Shella wins 2-0. One of the lower scoring matches we've seen so far tonight. So we're seeing some great numbers. All of our guys today are wrestling hard. Good matches. And uh, if you don't believe us, you can just look at the scoreboard right there. 38-0 is just the proof. All is, it's all you need. Kevin Sarisa out here at 160 for Hunter Central. Now you talked about wa really wanting the the, the wins tonight, and you can easily tell that. The scoreboard says 38 to zero. Hunter and Central is having one of the best nights of wrestling I think I've seen, and it, it almost is like Monroe didn't even show up. We're seeing some great movement by Kevin. He's heavy on the head, bumping him down. He's got him broken down. Uh, looks like a front headlock hard to see. Yep, uh, going for that ankle pick there, driving forward. It's just uh, right into a single. You see, just all that right there is just a lot to defend against. You don't even get to do what you want. Whatever you're planning, it just gets completely ruined. Just Kevin is just very aggressive, and you can see that right now. Um, working close to the outside the circle. Yep. Going to have to restart here. Just under one minute, one minute, 20 seconds into the first period. Both brass are still 0-0. Zero, zero. We see Kevin going for an underhook there, going for kind of control. We can see some head movement possibly, snapping down. Right now, both wrestlers have the same leverage against one another with the current position. And we're to, I, I bet we'll see some mo more movement from Kevin, perhaps really snap down into something. Just, just right there, another snap down. Still, again, far, close to that circle. Yep. Monroe seems to have a strategy of, if, if they can't get out of it, try and work towards the edge of the circle. Now, I'm surprised they haven't been called for fleeing the mat, to be honest with you, as it's been it's been very, very close mm -hmm. each time, and they've been doing it repeatedly in each in, in each of and every one of their matches. We saw that last match, too, when, uh, with that single leg, just pushing him out of the circle, didn't want to give up that one point, and the ref did hit him with stalling and eventually rewarded a point. Both wrestlers are 
you know, pretty even right now. 15 seconds left first period. I don't believe anyone wants, Monroe doesn't want to give anything up, and that's why I believe, you know, Kevin's being much more aggressive than Monroe with a snap down, front headlock. Monroe just, I've seen just mostly defensive and being chased out of the circle, frankly. <coughs> Choices given to Monroe, and Monroe chooses bottom. Kevin's got to work hard to keep Monroe on the mat. This could be where Monroe picks up a few points, but I'm not exactly sure. Monroe goes for a sit out, but Kevin brings him right back. The, that advantage of right from the whistle is often to just try and pop up, but Kevin has already broken that down. That's no longer an option. He has a bar in and uh, has a half. Let's go of it to go to a wrist, still with that bar in there. He's beginning to walk, hoping to break his wrestler down and Looks like that is pretty tight, and I'll tell you, it's an uncomfortable position. We saw Ryan talk about before yeah. how, how uncomfortable this can really be. When you have that, your arm pulled up that high, just now it's called for potentially dangerous because that really could become bad. Very tight position to be in. Kevin called off for that because, like you said, it could get very dangerous. And, and honestly, from here, it looks painful. Yes. Now, I'm sure you've been in that situation where mm -hmm. you just wanted to stop at that point. But you have to focus on not giving up the points. But Kevin is doing a really nice job working on top, trying to work his man onto his back, trying to get the, the uh, near fall points. But um, Monroe is really, really struggling to stay on their stomach. Um, I'm actually not seeing much movement from man on bottom. If anything, he's just trying to defensive break what, Ke mm -hmm. break what Kevin has. Um, I think twice now we've seen two separate occasions where Kevin's put a bar in and, you know, on, on Monroe's behalf, a bar is not something easy to break out of. You know, the best advice I can give someone for getting out of a bar is just to not get in that situation from the start. And twice we've seen that he's been able to uh, defend that pretty well. One more time, Kevin has that in there. It's a, a little high. Not, doesn't have enough to start getting any fall points yet. A lot of, co a lot of coaching from the bench right now. Still 0-0 zero, zero, um, as the second period begins to round out. Only, only about 15 seconds left. Kevin Sarisa is really working his man, keeping him on the ground. But it's, it, uh, Monroe, like you said, is kind of like they're not stalling. They're not doing a lot of movement, Just however. Defensive. It's, it's ex extre extremely defensive on the ground. And he's really trying not to do anything. And he's resisting the armbar, which has got to be a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. And he's withstanding a lot from Kevin Teresa as the second period winds down. Kevin Teresa does a great job keeping his man down, now starting at bottom, hoping to get that escape, uh, giving him the one lead advantage here, third period. If he does get this escape, he will be winning the match by one point. This has been very evenly matched, however. Kevin yes. has been... Um, offensively stronger just without the points. Now, Kevin could have a bit of a struggle here on defense yes. as he's yet to even get to his, he's on his knees, but he's got to his feet and he's just got to get out of here for the point. Now, his man is driving him off. Uh, they don't give him the escape, so they're gonna come again, back Again, chased out. Really hoping to see uh, Kevin with some movement here. Uh, Again, we've seen so much by Monroe just pushing their man out, and Kevin was standing, didn't have any ties on him. And he, it wasn't a neutral yet, but just, again, right before you could get something there, he was drowned, to, uh, pushed out of the circle again. He has an underhook in, and again, Monroe's pushed Kevin out of the circle. Monroe is trying to, st uh, I, think it's, I think it should be called stalling at some point, because he's really just pushing his man out. Uh, he's really pushing Kevin out of the ring, which is... Um, very unfair because Kevin is that close to getting an escape point. Mm -hmm. 130 left in the third period. Kevin's working an escape. Matt returned by Monroe. Monroe begins to uh, seems to be trying to work a cradle in there. Kevin doesn't seem to be giving up much at all. Stall warning on green. Kevin is so close to escaping, and he, he, he's right there. He just needs to get himself up and out. We've seen so much movement from Kevin, and that's only been in a short amount of time. He still has it in a minute and then some 
to get this point here. And again, they're going to knock him out. 108 left. Kevin's still on the bottom, still trying to get that escape point. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Jim uh, seems very calm right now. Again, both wrestlers also seem very calm, but you, you already know. Oh, there we there go. There it is. <clears throat> Kevin Cerisa Kevin now leads 1-0. One, one minute left in the match. Kevin's a very aggressive, uh, very aggressive wrestler, relentless, and I don't believe he'll be trying to give up anything here. Obviously, Monroe's will be trying to shoot, uh, guess something. Kevin has a great double leg. First takedown of the match Kev belongs to Kevin Sarisa, 3-0. Now, this is really, really late in the third period. Kevin Sarisa up 3-0, like I said. Now, he's just got to keep his, his man down and prevent himself from getting a reversal and or taken out. We saw Kevin before keep this man down before, giving up only a point here at 22 seconds, still with the 3-1 lead. Hand fighting by both of them. Let's see some quick movement, some pushing and pulling by Monroe. Only 15 seconds remain. A little Mon energy's beginning to pick up. Seven. Kevin gets a nice uh, single leg in there. Two seconds left. Kevin Teresa wins by regular decision 3 1. That was a very, very hard spot. Uh, match there, putting the Red Devils up 41 to 0. This has been an absolutely dominant, absolutely dominant match here by Hunter and Central, giving up no points so no match points so far. Dan from Motto, I'm not seeing anyone being sent out by Monroe. They seem to get all right. Here we have someone now. Dan's a very great wrestler to watch. You see so much great technique come from him. I don't choose favors, but I do I do enjoy watching Dan's matches. Uh, we did talk before about how Hunter Central just just feels like a family too, besides the team. And I feel like Dan's one of those guys who uh, is always helping guys in the room, coaching them, helping out with technique. And one thing about wrestling is that you're not wrestling each other unless you're in the the, the room. You're wrestling yourself and your opponent and the the referees on the wrestling match. Uh, on the wrestling mat. You can learn things from other other wrestlers on your team. So it's good to pick up new things and new techniques that might you might have not thought about. From Otto and his opponent come back to neutral. Still zero zero with one twenty left in the first period. Single leg attempt by Dan Fermato, both brought up to a collar tie. Dan seems to be dominating in this match. It's hard to tell now, but you can just tell by how Dan's pushing him around, backing him out of the circle. <clears throat> both trying to get the upper, adva upper uh, advantage right now, tying up. Monroe shoots a single, but Dan swings away. Dan now has a head in the side going for a, a cradle there, but he's actually going to pick up. There he goes. Two Picks points. up two, still with the cradle in there. Currently, it's, it's hard to see with the ref here, but you can either continue with that cradle and try and get some back points or, or just take the back in, which he just did now. You see Dan going for that wrist there, possibly working in a half. Hard to tell so far. 20 seconds left in the first period. He's going to try and put his man on his back right before the end. Fermato still working his man. He's got him on his back, but he's back. Real quick tilt thrown in there with only five seconds left in the match. First period ends. Fermato up 2-0. Fermato starting on the bottom here. Probably looking for another insurance escape point. We have Dan Fermato working up into a pod. 
front headlock and awarded one point escape. Dan leads 3-1. I mean 3-0, sorry. Wow, Pomato another, with another great takedown. takedown. Wow, he's now letting his man up. He he believes in himself that he's now working a better uh, better game, giving him one point just so he can plan on getting another double, which he seems to get. Uh, two points, great by Dan, great, great, great. A what? huge strategic yeah. maneuver there mm -hmm. by Dan Fermato, letting his man back up and getting another two points. Yeah, really not losing anything there. You'll see that sometimes when you see guys just way, uh, you know, far better in a neutral position. And you're seeing Dan just then letting him up just so he can get that another two. Not sure if he'll go for it again, but he does have a whole another minute and 20 seconds to try and work something here. A lot of time still left in this match. Fermato working his man onto his back. Oh, no. Out. Almost oh. tried rolling into it, but Dan keeps him down and is warded. Uh, he's getting near fall. The ref is holding three for Dan, leading a 10-1 lead. A great, great, great way to keep this match going. fermato has got the, the major, but can he get the tech fall? He's got a whole other period to go, and he's he's really working this man. Like you said, like even from the start, even in the first period, in the first few seconds, you said Dan is going to dominate this match, and so far he is. Wow, Dan just—they're out of bounds, so it wouldn't have counted. They had a reset, but Dan did have his man on his back there. No points awarded. If we see some uh, a tilt or something here from Dan just to get, get a few more points on there for him. Monroe tries to sit out. Dan keeping a lot of good pressure on that shoulder. Taking that near leg to keep him down, making it just more and more difficult for Monroe to work back up. Dan has a tight waist in there. We could be trying to see a bar half or just any type of bar worked in there. Tw 10 seconds left in the second period. fermato has got an entire another period to work his man and hopefully get even more points, get the tech ball or even a pin. Not too much really seems to be working off the <laughs> off the bottom here. Monroe chooses neutral. Interesting so seeing how well Dan dominates here. Caution green. Caution green on the start could be for a few reasons, maybe not having his foot on the line. I didn't see what it was there. Reaching out too soon before the whistle was called. Dan aggressive right away, moving his man. Front headlock, just, just how we saw before, front headlock right into that cradle. He has that leg and he pulls it over, not in a great position for Monroe. Dan should be. Now 12-1. Fermato absolutely dominating from the top here against his Monroe opponent. 12-1. He's still looking to get him on his back. 120 left in the third period. Just as before, you're seeing Dan really working in that shoulder. Cuts his man away as we saw before. Monroe being slow, a lot of pressure on his head there. Just not working his way up. One escape point rewarded Monroe. About one minute left in the match. Dan's working in his shots there, taking penetration steps, closing in that space between his opponent. Both circling in the middle of the mat right now and hand fighting. Monroe takes a shot. Dan has a, Dan has a great sprawl. Tries to shuck him by there and he, he gets it. That's two points, Dan from Otto. Now at this point, he's one point away from the tech fall. Would it be smart to let his man up and perhaps get another takedown? Well, with a tech fall, you would have to lead by 15. So it was 15-0, then it would be 15 points. But Dan would have to get 15 more than the two that Monroe has. So if he gets three, if he gets three back points here in the last 10 seconds, it could easily become a tech fall? You know, I'd be, I don't, I believe that Dan's capable of a lot of things. We're seeing that he is trying to work something now. He's trying to roll that wrist. Three seconds remain. Great match for Dan Fumato. <laughs> Dan Fermato absolutely dominant in his match against his Monroe wrestler. Fermato wins 14 to two. Just like I said from the very beginning, I knew Dan Fermato was gonna be a great, great, great match to watch. 
182, sending out Kyle, uh, oh, nope, Luke Pukowski. Lucas Pukowski comes out for Hunter and Central. His ear is covered. Yeah, he um, he got stitches recently, actually, in his ear. Uh, had a big cut on the inside. But he seems to be coming in and got that covered up. Nothing has slowed down Luke. Great hand fighting right away. Both circling. Luke being very aggressive. There was his hand fighting. Monroe shoots in that single leg. Luke's doing a very good job keeping it back and trying to get it outside from the leg. Keeping that weight down on his head. Wow, great. Right into a front headlock. That was a great, great job by Lucas Bukowski. <clears throat> Lucas trying to crack him down to the ground. And he's got it. He's got him down. He's just got to get on top. But he's back on his feet. Trying to get out of bounds. Could be called for a stalling warning here as he's not really doing much def uh, for defense there. Only about a minute in. Monroe swings Lucas out of bounds. That'll bring us down to 50 seconds here. They're going to stay at neutral. Lucas kind of has, has a dominant a dominant reach already here against the Monroe wrestler, although being um, had his leg taken up for a single early on. But he really turned the defense into offense and cracked his opponent down to the mat, but to no avail. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Looking over to the Monroe bench, you see a lot of heads down, hoods up. Doesn't seem too bright for Monroe. Luke goes for a double leg. He's defending that lock. And it's neutral. Back pushed out. <coughs> Ten seconds remain in the first period. Both wrestlers zero and zero. Both wrestlers, like you said, are fighting really well, trying to keep each other from getting points. But Lucas is going to start on the top here, on around the bottom, trying to get an escape point. Give him a little bit of an advantage here as we enter the second period. But Lucas stays on top, still working his man down to the ground, and he's got him. He's on his knees, but Lucas takes him down again. Lucas puts his leg over his man. Trying to escape that leg back. He doesn't want to have that hooked on. He could get up right back. Luke's, Luke's hanging a little high right now. <clears throat> a lot of excitement coming from both sides of the gym right now, both Central and Monroe. Lucas Bolkowski is pinned after a reversal. Hard fought there, but nothing you can do about that. It was a hard, hard, hard way to get to end that. But scores now 45 to six. Up next we have Lucas Bakarian, sophomore, wrestling for 195. Seen a lot of great stuff from Luke, uh, especially coming in from last year. Uh, I've definitely seen a lot of improvement coming from Luke. Lucas was carrying one of the three pins Hunter and Central had against uh, Phillipsburg a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Another really good wrestler as he is strong, and he really plays the mental game with his opponent. He knows where to find their weaknesses, and he really exploits them over everything. Yeah, just like you're saying, I, I believe part of that, his whole mental game, is he's fearless. You'll see that with a lot of wrestlers, and Luke's definitely one of them. F uh, fearless wrestler, I don't believe he's really worried about making mistakes. He doesn't lose his temper at, uh, in matches. And like you said with that Peeberg match, the room was ecstatic during that. It was a real big win against Luke. Also at Voorhees, he defeated a higher-ranking wrestler, and that was another real big win for Luke. Wow, we have Monroe going for a headlock dangerous because Luke defending pretty well almost taking his back there 
<clears throat> that could have played out pretty differently. Lucas, you said a sophomore. Oh. He's an absolute powerhouse, as we've seen so far this season. Taking down, like you said, higher-ranked opponents, and really, um, he he's shown his place on the varsity the varsity map. He certainly has. We have Luke going for a two-on-one rush in there, trying to hand fight, get another advantage here. Heading inside, you hear Coach Connor re-rush and trying to get that again. Pretty close to the uh, outside there. Hoping that this match doesn't get on, go on too long with no movement between the two. We have seen you know wrestlers being in and out of the circle too much, I feel. And again, another head uh, throw attempted by Monroe. Luke's an incredibly strong wrestler, and so that'd be definitely something hard to hit on him. Seeming, seemingly almost effortlessly, Luke defends that. At least at this point now, seeing that Monroe has tried that twice, Luke is expecting it, I believe. Luke shoots the single, spun around, has his back taken, no points award as the wrestlers are not down. Luke try. oh, Luke grab Luke with incredible defense, rolling out of what was a near takedown. Luke is still on the bottom here as he's being held down by Monroe. But the first period expires. Lucas is losing 1-2. That could have been very dangerous for Luke there as, as that roll did involve him being on his back. Luckily, he was able to continue through with that and get back. Bakarian starting in the bottom here, trying to get the escape point to even this game, this match up to 2-2. Two, two. At the lower light weight class, you see how just quick wrestlers are, and Luke, even though he's wrestling at 195, you don't see much, you know, you don't see him slowing down at any rate here. Bakarian struggling to get up to his knees and to his feet here being held down very well by the Monroe wrestler. Monroe's chopping at the knees and elbows, trying to crack, trying to crack Luke in there, trying to get another uh, cradle in there. Luke reaches back in there. He could be trying to go for a Peterson roll and get out of uh, bottom. Stalemate. We have another, just over a minute here, second period. Luke only falling behind by one point. Lucas Pekarian looking for the, the escape point immediately, trying to get to, back to his feet and hopefully even get the reversal if he can. Sits out right away. Oh, again, we have another sit out. Luke is standing and he goes for a hip toss, not tight enough, right into a uh, single leg. Bakarian's got the crowd behind him here tonight as the score moves to 2-2. Two -two. They're gonna stay. They're gonna stay at neutral. Monroe's gonna step out of bounds and they're gonna come back to neutral in the center. Luke going from the front for the front headlock there, missing it. Thirty seconds. You, you're hearing the crowds loud and up. A lot of them calling out, "He's tired." You know, going against a man like Luke as a strong person has a lot of work against. Luke's going for an inside trip there, drops it down into a t into a shot. Still having both hands on Monroe. Sits him with a double. Luke only has to hold down, spin around to get the two. That should be two for Luke. He's going to get him. As two, now with him on his back. He has to hold him for five more, three more seconds here. Back, two back points on the ground. They're going to give him to him. Bakarian takes the lead here, 6-2.
What an amazing turnaround right at the finish of the second period there. You can already tell Monroe's Mon wrestler is yeah. tired. Monroe is very slow. He's still standing, still hasn't even made his way back into the circle, walking very slowly. He sat for a while. You can tell he's tired. When you got a man like Lugan Tavi, he's very muscly, he's very strong all around. He's going to be breaking you down, he's going to be chopping you down, he's going to be moving you, pulling you, pushing you. It's just a, it's a just wear Monroe down. It's going to be very tough for Monroe to get up. Monroe. Bakarian brings Bakarian him straight down. Man. Oh, locking hands. One point green. Monroe's going to start down. Got him, Luke. Yeah, a little mix up there. They were supposed to start down. Monroe with the sit out. Luke holding on tight. Oh, Monroe has that headlock in there. Very close to the circle there. Luke actually turns into him as they stand. One point potentially dangerous to Luke Picarian. I honestly think the Monroe wrestler right now is extremely desperate to try and figure out how to beat Luke Spicarian. Luke Spicarian starting on top once more after that mm -hmm. dangerous, dangerous head head play there. That from type Monroe. of headlock is often referred to as a desperation move. It's it's risky on your own part. Um, and you've seen this guy for three or four times already. Wow, Monroe's completely flying out now. Luke's working in a bone uh, bow and arrow cradle. Luke's incredibly strong. That's going to be hard for someone to defend against. Monroe is hit with a stalling point. Another point is awarded to Luke, making it 8-3. Luke still has a minute and 15. Wow, Monroe is really just broken down, flattened up. I'm not seeing any movement in the legs. No advance. Luke's getting a nice wrist roll there, bringing him down further. <sighs> One minute, Luke just throws in a leg there. He could be working something off of here. <clears throat> Something you said about Luke Spikarian is that he has the stamina and the will to stay in with his opponent. Mm -hmm. Now, you're, you're seeing the Monroe wrestler immediately get tired, and he tired out, I think, at the end of the, the end of the second and going into the third. Now, we're seeing him. He's got, he lost two points on stalling. Now, that's huge when you're talking about um, a wrestling match and when you only have 40 seconds left. Now, the, like you said, it looks like he's trying to do anything he can. These desperation moves that you said, like trying to find anything he can do to take Luke down. Wow, right for it, straight into it. Luke rolls through and brings it to his back. Luke is preparing on top of his opponent. He's got the takedown again. The stadium is incredibly loud. And what I was saying before about that being dangerous is because he hit that, and now he ended up on his back. Yeah, there you go, Lucas. Lucas Bakarian with another pin okay. of the night. At that point, the Monroe wrestler had completely given up. You Monroe. saw his arm just fall to the ground. Lucas Bakarian already had 12 points, but let's not make it. A, let's make it a pin. Angelo Crespo, we've seen a lot from him. <laughs> Angelo here is one of the fan favorites. I believe we'll see a lot from the crowd here. So you, Angelo. They're going to uh, force it there, actually. <laughs> Forfeit. That could be for a lot of reasons. Joyce rounding up. Last match of the night. 100 Central leads 57 to 6. Ryan Joyce weighing in for the 285 weight class. Joyce goes right in for his opponent, trying to take him down right off the bat. Monroe's going to push him. Yeah. Out the of thing bounds. with uh, heavyweights, both of these guys, you're not going to see a lot of shots, really. It's going to be upper body moves. We're going to see bear hugs. And already we saw Monroe start to work for something there. A lot of this is going to be hand fighting, trying to get the upper advantage, which can be a problem. I'm curious to see if this 
Monroe Wrestler is going to try and throw all the headlocks that we saw from uh, the last match. No clear dominant oh, wrestler here. But this is, Joyce is in a great spot there. If he had that little tighter, he would have had a lift there into a bear hug. Like I was talking about before, those upper body moves. He's able to lock those hands and just lift a little bit. Broken out of there now. Not to say that we won't see any shots from him. We'll just, just be possibly uh, shoulder passes, elbow passes. One minute left here in the first. Joyce stuck here. You can hear the rest of the wrestling team cheering pretty loudly for Joyce. We all want to see some movement from him. Both come crashing down to the mat. No points awarded as it just went out of bounds. 30 seconds in the last match. Let's go, Joyce! Not seeing Muff. Oh, wow. Great Ryan Joyce there. I believe we'll see that again later on in the match. Wow, it's one more time. Dangerous situation there for Joyce. He loses two points to Garcia. Joyce comes to his feet. But to no avail, no points awarded for Joyce for the escape. He's going to start down. <clears throat> Joyce looking for another quick escape, trying to get out of Garcia's grasp. Already Ryan's posting up, Monroe's off to the side, just trying to keep that weight down on him. Wow, both standing, he has a single leg broken off. There you go. Both stand neutral. Ryan Joyce won, Luis Garcia two. See some movement by there, double underhook, Joyce. Words of wisdom there from Coach Kanagala Rome. Ryan Joyce releases out. He's going to put his hands up on Joyce's head. Garcia looking tired right now. Joyce as well. No really big movement so far here. Both trying to work better. Uh, uh, advantage against one another with hand fighting here. Both trying to get those inside ties. Under a minute left in the second period. Come on, Joyce. Joyce looking for some shots. Shot taken there by Garcia. Joyce looking to get him on the ground, but he keeps on his feet. 33 seconds left, and he's going to push him out of bounds. Both out. Joyce and Garcia come back at neutral in the middle. Joyce looking for another takedown, but he can't get, seem to get it. Joyce had an inside step there. 16 seconds left. Um, I believe in the third period we'll see a lot more movement from Joyce. That'd be more aggressive out there. Only problem now is that yeah, he's been wrestling for two periods here, and that's going to be a lot of energy. I just, we're just hoping it doesn't take too much toll. Joyce again. But that'll bring us to the end of the second, start of the third. They're gonna start Monroe onto the bottom here. Now this could be dangerous for Joyce. He has to yeah. keep his man down and try not to let him get any points. But Joyce immediately goes for the leg, trying to lift him up and over, but n to no avail. Joyce keeping Garcia down. Garcia is yet to make it even a move to get up to his knees. He's still in the starting position. Oh. But Joyce rolls him over, but Joyce ends up on his back. A reversal, another two points there for Garcia. One, four. Get up, Joyce! Get up, Joyce! 
Joyce working up to his knees now. Trying to pot up. That's a lot of weight on top of you to get up. The Monroe coach, I can't tell. It seems like he's trying to tell him to cut him, which he does. Joyce, 2-4. Ryan Joyce has one minute and 10 seconds to get him down to the ground. Get a two-point takedown. He has plenty of time, I think. And Ryan Joyce, I think we're going to see another explosion of energy here from Hunter and Central. Putting them up, hopefully, here in the very last match of the night. It can even be said now that Hunter Central has had a completely dominant night over Monroe here in the sectional semifinals tonight. We are going to see, we are going to need to see Joyce go for something here. Third period, just about 30 seconds left. Both wrestlers, collar tie. 30 seconds left for Joyce to get something going. He's trying to get the underhook, maybe a single there, but he knocks him out and he's going to lose a point for stalling. Oh, he's going to get a point for the stalling, excuse me. He's got one more to do. Joyce gets a takedown here. He will lead in the match by a point. Almost for a blast double. Doesn't want to take too much of a sub. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Amazing. He's got two. Joyce for two. Amazing. Puts him up. Five, four. Joyce got to stay on for two more seconds. And he's got oh, it. Joyce man. with a win here tonight. Oh, Hunter no. Central. On the buzzer. We see Monroe. Absolute and sheer wow. frustration here. Hunter and Central is absolutely ecstatic right now. On the buzzer, he gets that pin. I believe it was a hip toss he went for at the very last second. Down by only a point. But not only does he get the two, he gets the pin as well. Ryan Joyce did amazing here tonight for Hunter and Central. 63 to 6, wow. final line for Hunter and Central versus Monroe, sectional semifinals. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Here we are, Hunter and Central Fieldhouse. Thank you, Jack. Uh, it's been a pleasure. It's a great opportunity. I Thank love the you. experience. This Friday is going to be a big match against Howell, hosting right here. So make sure you get field to come. Hopefully, we'll be there for the finals. Thank you and have a good night. I'm John Seneca, your and school, your station.